Again, if you have trouble, you can just draw a large number line, put them all on the number line, and read the line from left to right. That would tell you what's the smallest numbers and what's the sequentially larger numbers. That's one way to do this. By the way, is there any other homework to turn in? Does anybody have any? What's the smallest number up here? The smallest number should be the most negative number because that's what's going to be to the furthest left on a number line. So we look at this and we order it kind of in our head is really what you're doing. You're saying, what's to the furthest left on my number line? Right now it's negative 8. So where this needs to start, if we're going smallest to largest, is negative 8. And just for me, I like to cross that out when I do it. That way I don't have to look at it again. So I know that's there. Now what's the next smallest digit after that? Good. That'd be right next to it, going to the right on the number line. So we're going to have negative 7, cross it out. What's the next one? The next we have, well, that's our last negative number. Any negative is going to be smaller than any positive. It doesn't matter. So any negative number is a smaller number than a positive. So negative 1 comes next. Then we have what? Zero. Sure. We're going to have the 4. Yeah, and then we're back to positive numbers, which we all we have accomplished that already. Did you get it right, smallest to largest? Good deal. Now, another definition I have for you that we gotta cover before we go any further. Have you ever heard of the opposite? I mean I know we know opposite of like opposite of white we say black, opposite of right would be wrong, opposite of left would be right, opposite of five would be Now how'd you get that? Right. Why? What's positive one is negative. Positive and negative are opposite. That's actually the idea, is, is what it is. Opposite means the same distance from zero, but on the other side of zero. So when you say opposite numbers, you might have heard those before, right? You're like, oh, the opposite of negative three is? Three. Sure. And the opposite of 10 would be? Negative. Sure. It just means the other side of zero. So when we say opposite, that's what we mean. If you've never heard of that before, that's it. So opposite means two numbers, the same distance from zero, but on the other side of zero. Okay, so again, opposite of opposite of negative eight? Eight. Good. Opposite of four? Negative four. Opposite of eight. Negative eight. Good. Does it matter whether we have an actual number or variable? No. Opposite of negative B everybody. Eight. Okay, so we can extend this concept to variables as well. Very good. Awesome. How about the opposite of zero? Negative. There is none. There is none. Is there a negative zero? No. no. It's just zero then. That's fine. There is an opposite, but it's still zero. One more thing I need to cover with you um, is how to say some, some of these things. Because we use this symbol, two different contexts. You've seen it before. I just want to make sure that you see it one last time before we start using it. If I were to write this and ask you what that plus meant, how would you say that? Would you say plus or positive? Positive. If I said, if I wanted to say that expression, you'd say six plus two. Six plus, you would say six positive two, would you? 
No. No, we'd probably say 6 plus 2. So when we have something in conjunction with two numbers, like we have right here, when, it, when it's an expression, we do use the word plus. If you have a number sitting out here all by itself, and you, are you going to say that's plus 4? Or you say that's positive 4? So while we don't write, well, if I say 4, to distinguish between negative and positive, we say positive 4 or negative 4. This wouldn't be negative 4 because we have no sign in front of it. It's implied to be like a plus sign. But we don't say plus. We say, we say the positive here. So when we have no sign in front of a number, we're going to say positive. If we have a number with that plus sign, that's when we use that word plus. Um, also here, it's a little bit more relevant in this case. What do you say for the first example that I have up there? Eight mm -hmm. minus three. So we're not going to say eight negative three. No. And the next one, we're not going to say minus five. We're going to say negative five. That's when we use those different terminologies to kind of convey what we're trying to get across. Are you following me on that? Okay, just use appropriate things. If we're talking about a subtraction problem, like here, yeah, we use the word minus for sure. But if we have no number in front, then that's implied that that's a negative five. The and sign goes with the number. Negative five? That's negative five. How did I get it? Yeah. I'm just giving it to you to see if you can distinguish between a minus and a negative in this case. So that's the idea. So if I have a number out front and I'm subtracting, of course we're going to say minus. If I don't, I don't have a subtraction problem, I'm just giving you whether this number is positive or negative, we're going to say negative. One last thing i got to show you before we get on to absolute value, and that will be the end of our section here today. In certain cases, we can simplify a lot of mathematics, especially the signs of numbers. For instance, what I mean by this, I'm going to go a little bit further than what I'm supposed to right now. I'm going to give you a little preview of some information. That way, when we get there, it's a little bit easier for us. Would you like that? Yeah. Sure. I hope so. We can often simplify. The signs of numbers. What I mean is this. Whenever you have two negatives next to each other like this, this is negative quantity negative x. So the negative of negative x. Or in other words, the opposite of negative x. So when you're seeing this, it goes, okay, the opposite of, that's a, your negative. The opposite of negative x, what's the opposite of negative x? Positive x. This is going to kind of lead us into, have you ever heard of, you've heard of this before, a negative times a negative equals a positive? positive. We're going to see that that's the same exact case right here. This right here, you can always simplify to a positive x. When you see those two negatives next to each other, you can simplify that to a positive. That helps us a lot. Let me give you a few examples to illustrate this, Jeff. Um, I've always seen it as like, because the minus and the minus or whatever, you can like make a plus sign right there. Yeah, if you want to use that, you could do that. Like, like a graphic organizer yeah. say, oh, I can make that. That helps a lot for a lot of people, that's true. And I'll show you that when we get to multiplication. Yeah. Um, this is kind of like a preview, but yeah, you're exactly right. So for instance, let's try a few examples here. How much is negative, negative 27? Or in other words, the opposite of negative 27. How much is that? Positive 27. Good, very good. How about that? Y. Negative y. Yeah, negative y. What it says is the opposite of y. Or negative y in this case. Here's one that's going to blow your mind, maybe. I hope so. hope this is good for you. Positive 
Positive. Notice how this looks really similar to this one, only there's a number out front. Guess what? The same idea actually works on this thing. If I have a minus, a negative, when we do that operation right there, what you can really consider this as, I'll show you the whys in a while. I'll show you why we can do this. When you have that, it's very similar to doing the whole positive idea. Remember the opposite of negative 9? Uh -huh. Only this time, we change that to a plus. That's the same basic idea. When you have those, a minus and a negative or two negatives together, they become either a positive or a plus respectively. Just like here we made that a positive, here we can actually make that a plus. I'll teach you those rules when we get into the multiplication, but it's used right now in some of this opposite stuff, so I have to show it to you now. Guys, that's new for a lot of people. If you're having trouble with that right now, I need to know. Do you guys have questions on that one? You okay with this? Yes, no? Put that one one more time. I'll sure. The opposite of the opposite the of last one. Sure, I'll, I'll get that. The opposite of negative x is of course going to be positive x. Opposite of negative 27, well that's going to be positive 27. This is saying that a negative and a negative make a positive. That's basically what it's saying. Opposite of y gives you negative y. What this is saying is a negative and a positive give you a negative. Those are, can you see that those are going to be our multiplication rules later on when we finally get there? This is kind of a preview. This one's a little bit interesting. I'm going to show you the why later. I can't show it to you right now because I haven't shown you the addition rules yet, uh, but I will. But you need to know that this idea progresses all the way through a problem like this. So even though I know this is not a negative, we say that would be a minus, the same idea applies. So if you have a minus and negative, that is going to become a positive or a plus in this case. Two negatives give you a positive, a minus negative gives you a plus. Positive and plus, we're just using them in two different contexts because here we're, we have a number up front, here we don't. One's an addition problem, one is just a positive one. Why doesn't the 7 go to minus 7, negative 7? That's the value of this, that number. Uh, every number is included, I'm sorry, every sign is included with the number just behind it. So for okay. instance, this minus talks about that stuff. It doesn't talk about that one. Okay. If I wanted this to be, that's a great question. If you guys aren't noticing that, if I wanted this to be negative, I'd have to put a negative up front. These signs past the number don't affect that number. They affect just this number. Does that make sense? Or if you wanted it to be a negative, you put a plus up front. Uh, seven, I'm saying. Uh, well, right now I have, that is like a positive. Yeah. So I can't, okay. I'm not going to change that one. I, I see. Let's have that. Okay. That's one time. Okay, remember, that's just a preview. We will get there. I just wanted to load that information in your heads right now. So you're kind of seeing this a couple times because that's hard for a lot of people. All right? So now you've seen it once. Next time we see it, it's going to be fresher in your heads. Are you with me on this? So we're going to spiral it in. Okay, the last thing we've got to talk about in this section is something called the absolute value. How many people have heard of the absolute value? How many people have forgotten or have never heard of the absolute value? Okay, that's fine. If you forgot it, that's okay too. We're going to talk about it right now. 